Hello and welcome to another video. Lionel and I have been having a look at this um, Not A Tetris, Not A Walkman. So this album, Alba, The Wall cassette player. And I was in the garden listening to a rather good uh, 1977 David Niven autobiography. Um, and it's fine, absolutely fine for a spoken word. And I wondered whether it would be any good for music. And it's not bad. Lionel Richie is um, a good uh, cassette to listen to test a cassette player on because he's got a lot of held notes. There's some piano tracks in there as well, piano notes. And they're really good for listening to Wow on Flutter. And it's not bad. This cassette player is not bad. But there's a lot of buzz and electrical noise from it. So it's not something you'd want to use for you know your, your most important listening. But while you're sitting in the garden playing Tetris, uh, or the Tetris-like game, then it's not bad. But what I thought I'd do is, it's got a couple of um, uh, screws, rusty screws on the back. I thought I'd open it up and see if we can easily access the belt. Oops. We'll see if we can easily access the belt and uh, see if the belt is in a poor condition. If it is, I've got some quite cheap belts from a multi-pack. And I want to put one, one of those on and see if it makes any difference at all. I'm really not a fan of these cheap belts from multi-packs for um, personal stereos, especially Walkman, because they need to be really good. They need to be the best sound quality I can make them with my limited skills. And I don't see the point of putting a cheap belt in and still having lots of wow and flutter. So let's have a look. Oh, that was easy. Now, if you know what might be causing the buzz, and it's worse as you turn a cassette player around, you know, move it from one... What's that noise? Oh, it must be the spindles or something. It's worse um, as you move it like that. You get a lot... Oh, look, that actual screw thing is broken now, I think. Um... Yeah, it, it, the buzz, the electrical buzz gets worse as you move it around. I don't know what causes it. It could be caps. People say it's caps, but I really don't think as many things are as broken with bad caps as we uh, as we like to think. And the fact is, if you turned up the other way, um, a dodgy capacitor would not really make it uh, sound any worse. I've got a funny feeling it's electrical interference from the motor. So let's have a look at these belts then. That is quite tight. That doesn't feel bad at all. Let's take it off and have a look at it. It's slightly out of... That's really quite springy. I don't think I replaced this as well. That's quite good. So that's not bad, that one. Let's try this other one under here. Yeah, that one's a bit pingy as well. Can we get that out? Yeah, I think we probably can. You see that? I'll right, let's zoom in a little bit, see if you can see a bit better. I wish that was all as easy as this. Two screws. Look at that. Very springy. And not misshapen at all. Right, then, in that case, this is going to be a short video. So, basically, it just goes to show, I had not put the belts in on this. I've never been in here before. But it doesn't, as I said, it doesn't sound too bad. It's just a lot of electrical noise. So let me have a look off camera and see if I can see what might be causing that. That confused me. It's got a speaker on it. But of course it's for the Tetris game. Right, it's a Telltale Spring now. I think this is what they used to call, or still call, a tenashing mechanism. Um, but... The belts look fine. There's nothing obvious that could be making that noise, but it's just like a poorly made unit. I don't think it's as poor as I thought it was. So what I'm going to do is some general maintenance while I'm in here. OK, so I bought some contact cleaner the other day, and I've also been doing a bit of research as to why um, people use contact cleaner instead of IPA. IPA, isopropyl alcohol, is... Uh, where's my screwdriver gone? is uh, basically neat alcohol and it's good at removing it's a solvent so it's good at removing contaminants and getting rid of sticky stuff 
and contact cleaner I think is quite a lot of IPA but it also has some other chemicals which serve as lubricants so I think the main cleaning agent is still IPA but um, it's got some um, some lubricants in there which whichever whatever is your uh, cleaning it's going to help to lubricate it to stop it oxidizing and make it smoother and one of the problems we've got on this cassette is the uh, speaker hang on a second my battery's still in or did I take them out the batteries are out so let's grab those again it's got a scratchy volume button on it there's a volume control on it so let's put that back in we'll have a look at let's pop those back in we'll have a little look at how this is going to go hopefully they won't spring out again I'll just try and hold those in so let's try can you hear that electrical noise it's horrible So I wonder if I put my tape in the wrong way around. It's only recorded on one side. I've got to record another demo tape. Not sure whether that warrants a video. There we go, let's try it now. Oh yeah, I can hear that. There we go. <laughs> That's weird. Because that volume control was very scratchy. You know, it's um, popping when I used it last time. So I'm going to give it a clean anyway. And give me a good excuse to try this um, try this contact cleaner so I think that's where we want to get it in just under there so there's the volume control let's move that around oh there it is you can see that let's see if I can point to it just inside there I can't really get that in there. There's a little piece of, there's a little silver piece which spins around when the volume control goes around. That is the um, variable resistor. So that's what I've got to spray into that. Uh, Shane can't really see. You could probably see better on this if you're watching on a big screen. Oh, actually, on the subject of big screens, let me know what you watch videos on. Because apparently I hear that about 50% of people on YouTube watch on a TV. I don't do that. I watch on a 22 inch monitor or a 23 inch monitor or uh, no bigger than a seven inch phone screen. So I wanna know whether, I should do a poll really. I wanna know whether people watch my videos on a small screen or a big screen because it's gonna make it easier for me to decide whether I need to, um, do stuff close up or far away. Okay, what have I done wrong here? Because that does not work. Might have to read the instructions here. Oh, there we go. It clicks out. So we've got a narrow spray. Oh, I see, or a wide spray. Okay, so it clicks out. That's why it wasn't working. So we've got a narrow spray. I'm just going to test it on this piece of tissue comes out quite a bit of it so I've got to do teeny teeny little bit in here let's zoom in I don't know how much you can see it's either you seeing or me seeing but not both I'm afraid I might have to cut the audio because my daughter's just arrived although she has been on my channel there we go so I think I've got some in there I've got to get some of that bit there as well I suppose it's actually my wife on a business call, so I might have to cut the audio out of this if she's talking a lot. There we go, I'll just talk over her. So we go, oh, I can feel that, I can feel it. It is like APA, IPA. So you just bung it in now, up and down. I can actually feel a difference on that. It's not as scratchy as I'm spinning it round. That's good stuff. I've, I've, been doing this YouTube channel now four years and I've never used contact cleaner. Oh, I can really feel the difference in that. It's a lot smoother to turn that volume control now than it was. <laughs> there we go. So I'm not going to mess around with anything else inside here. Let's pause while I shut the door.
Really enjoying doing the videos today. This is the second one I've shot. I've shot the um, Music Center video, the um, second part of the Music Center video that I started about a month ago in the garden. And I'm doing this one, and then I've got a few. That's IPA, by the way. Um, and I'll put a link to this uh, affiliate link in the um, description box. A few people have bought via my affiliate link. I don't earn very much from it, but it is appreciated. Um, we can just search for it. So we're going to do the heads. I should have already put the thing back on again, but never mind. Yeah, so I've got a few more videos that I want to make today. But uh, I'm really enjoying having some dedicated time to make some videos. So what we're going to do, and it's going to be quite difficult to show you. I'm just going to put that in play. And I need more light, really. I can't, so you might be able to see. I can't. Ah, there we go. There we go. So now you can see it quite well and I can't. That is our pinch roller. And some people say to me, don't use IPA on a pinch roller because it can make the rubber go hard. Uh, to which I say fine. But I've looked at a lot of instruction manuals and most of them say use IPA. Got quite a bit on there, haven't I? Um, and also the, um, some instruction manuals say use um, the, uh, what do they call it? Methylated spirits, I think it is. If I've got that wrong, I'll put that <laughs> I'll put a bit of text up on the screen. Actually, quite difficult to get in there and really hard to do it on camera. But basically, that little rubber roller there, I'm just cleaning it with some IPA. Doesn't look too bad actually. And also the capstan there. And also, if I can see it, the head, I can just about see it in there. Can you see it? Let's see if I can zoom in. Let's see if I can focus in. Oh, there we go. That silver head there with the two white lines on it is the. Um, playhead on this but I, I really can't get in there while while you see it it's really hard to get in there let's put it in play that might be a bit easier yeah, you can see it just there that head there is the playhead and you get your IPA on let's get a bit more on there and you should oh, I can't get in from that end because of that you should do it just back and forth not up and down but back and forth along that head and it just cleans up any of the oxidization that comes off the cassette tape and anything else and it doesn't seem to be too bad so i've got quite a bargain on this i think i don't even know whether i'm on there anyway so i think that is probably as much of this we can do what did that come from that might have been on there already so i think that's all we can do on this oh no there's one more thing to do Okay, I'm going to need a pair of scissors, and this is my trick for cleaning a um, uh, a headphone socket. Any headphone socket that is uh, three and a half mil, which are a standard, which I think is an eighth of an inch. I don't know, something like that. Um, I chop the end off of one of these cotton buds where it's got compressed paper stem, not a plastic one, just a compressed paper, and you want just a little bit of IPA on the end of that. Let me feel that. You don't really want to dunk it in the IPA because, there we go, the paper begins to disintegrate and what you do is just stick it in the slot. Spin it around. So you push it down past the point where um, your headphones go in, you know, all the way to the end essentially. And all I've done there is just cleaned off a little bit of the dirt that's on the contacts on the inside of the uh, headphone socket. And that one's quite loose. I've done one before, which was much, much tighter than that. So I think that's it. So let's put the back on this cassette. On this, uh, what do we call them? Personal stereos. I know that this is what we used to call them back in the day. Because you had stereos, but they weren't personal. They had speakers on them. And then when these came out, they were called personal stereos. Walkman is only for Sony Walkmans. Walkmans? I saw an advert once 
made by Sony, advertising their range of Sony Walkmen, and they called it Walkmen. So we know that the plural of Sony of Walkman is Walkmen, not Walkmans. Well, at least it was on that advert. Right. I think that's as good as this one's going to get. Let's plug our headphones in. Plug our tape in. Let's see if we can hear it. Batteries are always going to make it louder. I haven't got the battery cover for this, but it does still work. That's it, see you in the next video.